Kololeko Sibanda, who joins us from Harare. He's the presidential spokesman for the movement for, for democratic change. And Kululeku, thank you so much indeed for your time. We've seen the pictures, but tell us what you saw today and what happened in Harare. Well, what we saw today was a level of brutality we've not seen before. Uh, the uh, police officers um, uh, uh, bargaining people, uh, attacking people who were uh, uh, very uh, cooperative, who were very peaceful, and only waiting to hear a speech from uh, the president, uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa. So clearly, uh, uh, what we're seeing today is uh, confirmation that uh, Mr. Mnangagwa has always been the balance henchman in the Mugabe regime, and there's no other way uh, to maintain and keep power other than to harm people today. Uh, people who were injured are were not even uh, on the main people that President Chamisa has gone to see in hospital now, uh, were one of them a journalist who was uh, uh, really doing his job uh, and not really part of the people that wanted to hear the president without being on uh, at work. Uh, and he also had an elderly woman uh, who was passing by. Uh, and uh, as you saw in that clip, which you, you just showed, uh, a man who was selling his own words. So clearly, uh, and you can see him uh, on the floor now, and clearly uh, that's the kind of situation we're seeing here, uh, a ruthless uh, uh, regime that wants to maintain power by uh, using extreme violence. Okay, you know, Emerson Malangagwa, you'll know this, Uncle Aleke, that he, uh, he gave an interview to CNBC Africa on Sunday, and he said that he was opening up space for political rivals. Do you think the president ordered this crackdown personally? He certainly did, because we went through this process over a very long time. Uh, we met with the police over the, before the weekend to understand what their position would be. Uh, and we know that uh, he's uh, not very fond of telling the truth. He continuously uh, uh, just tries and believes he can mislead the international community by using specific passwords that he gets from his advisors, such as is that is opening space. Space is more closed now than it has ever been, more closed than it was under Mugabe. We can't have meetings as the movement for democratic change. In fact, we are banned in this country as a political party that opposes Mnangagwa's party. Uh, he allows uh, all but one of, uh, in 10, he allows uh, none but one of our meetings simply to create the, impre the impression that there is competition. This is the true definition of uh, a regime that tries to be comp to, to appear competitive when it is actually very dictatorial and, uh, and ruthless. How did he become president two years ago? Because there was all this talk about a new start for Zimbabwe, and yet Manangagwa used to be very close to Robert Mugabe. They're both from ZANU-PF. Did he lie to the people, or is it just that the people prefer ZANU-PF to any other party, including your own? He certainly lied. Uh, we know that... Um, uh, he, he said that uh, what uh, brought him into power was the revolution. It wasn't. It was a military uh, a, a coup by uh, the military and brought him into power. We also know that last year he did not win the elections. President Tamisa won the elections, and that, in fact, what he did was use the Supreme Court, used very forceful power against the Supreme Court and against members of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission that were sort of willing to uh, accept uh, uh, notions of democracy in our, in our system. And uh, there were shootings in their houses and so forth. So we think that uh, we know for a fact that uh, he never uh, could have attained power in this country under anybody. Anybody could have uh, run against Mnangagwa and anybody could have won. But after we put President Chamisa against him, President Chamisa won handsomely because uh, uh, he also at the same time captured the uh, 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 desires of the people, the uh, ambitions of our people, uh, and there was the right candidate for a difficult time. Mnangago had benefited a little bit from the fact that he had replaced Mugabe and people were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, they didn't give him so much, uh, because, which is why he lost to President Chamisa. Look, it's quite clear that nothing justifies violence against peaceful uh, civilians. But given the state of Zimbabwe's economy, I mean, the economy is practically crumbling. Some people think it's going to become a failed state as far as the economy is concerned. Doesn't that mean, though, that people should be giving Manangagwa a bit more time just to be able to get over this hurdle? Because you can't imagine any leader of Zimbabwe would be able to actually achieve anything in a short space of time, given the economic challenges. This is what we say to the police officers this morning before they started brutalizing the people. We say to them in no uncertain terms, this is not a demonstration. 
This is not a public event. This is the president addressing his supporters over pertinent, pertinent issues. He was going to talk about Christmas. He was going to talk about how we uh, uh, try and uh, have a, a, a hopeful uh, nation. And uh, we told the police, by beating up the people, if you throw tear gas canisters today, you are in fact uh, 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 sending a bill to the economy of several billions because you are showing that you have a preponderance for for unnecessary violence. That scares away investment, scares away business, it scares away employers and employees at the same time. You're really making the CBD a very difficult place to go to during the first season. So they're affecting everybody. And we told them that. So we are saying the question should be passed on to Mnangagwa. Doesn't he think that he should give Zimbabweans Zimbabwe a chance to talk about their issues and to see how they can resolve them and, uh, and help the economy? This clearly shows that Mnangagwa and his regime are a threat to the national security of this country and do not care a single bit about the recovery that's so desperately needed. Uncle Uleko Sibanda from the Movement for Democratic Change, thank you so much for coming on to TRT World. Appreciate it.